All right. So this is module one for AZ303, where we will be talking about AZ303 module one, and that module one is about Azure Active Directory. So what is Azure Active Directory? So it's a multi-tenant cloud-based directory and identity management. So what you typically do with Windows Server Active Directory, you pretty much do everything with Azure Active Directory. There are subtle differences, but we'll see how the first experience looks like. So let us, right now, what I'm right now in is in my Azure subscription. So I went to portal.azure.com and then I went ahead and Let's say I went to the Azure Active Directory. Uh, by default, you are always logged in to Azure Portal via an Azure Active Directory. So we are right now in the default Azure Active Directory, which I am part of. And you can see that I cannot delete this tenant because I do not have rights to do that. However, I can create a tenant. So when you create a tenant, you just give a name. So this is a complete new Azure Active Directory you are creating, right? So you just need to provide all the information. So let's say is a my cycle. Um, let's give a better name, AZ303WG. Okay, and then I give a DNS entry. So let's say I say WG AZ303 and then check if the, the URL is available. It is already taken, they're saying, so maybe I can say, uh, AZ303WG. And you will see that Activity is available. And I choose the location I want to select, my, create my Activity. So you can see all the countries where I can create my Activity. So you can select anywhere. So let's say I want to create it in the Netherlands. So I choose the data center location that is Europe. And it is important for you to know where your user information are getting stored. Right? So now you can say review and create. And that's going to start creating the Active Directory. And once this is done, it will tell you that this is done. So what basically Azure Active Directory offers you, it offers you a lot of things. And it's a fully managed service, all in cloud. Right? It gives you the single sign-on capability. Right? with your on-premises uh, web application as well, cloud-based applications. It gives you uh, an ability to connect devices like Windows, Android, Mac OS, iOS, etc. Uh, it can protect your on-premises web application. It can easily extend your existing Active Directory, which is in Windows Server, to the cloud. And then it can protect the sensitive data and information. So basically, you can allow an enterprise application to only interact when somebody is authenticated, right? Now, Azure Active Directory or Azure AD or AAD in short has got a couple of terminologies we often use. You can see that it says that tenant creation was successful, right? So the, what is tenant? A tenant typically is a dedicated and trusted instance for Azure AD that's automatically created when your organization signs up for Microsoft Cloud Services, like Microsoft Azure, like Microsoft Intune or Office 65. And Azure tenant represents a single organization. So think of it, your, your company, right? And then you are signing up by by the name of your company to Office 365. So you get a tenant, right? And the Azure AD directory is what each Azure tenant has a dedicated and trusted Azure AD directory. The Azure AD directory includes the tenant's users, groups, apps, and is used to perform identity and access management function for the tenant resources, right? So you have a tenant and then you have Azure AD, right? And then you can think from a subscription perspective, like Azure subscription. So you you, you pay for what you use in Azure, right? Uh, you create a virtual machine, you create storage, 
So yours, you ha can have many subscription, uh, which can be um, separately built, and you can use this tenant to to associate your Azure subscription. And then you have Azure AD account, which is that. That is an identity created through Azure AD or another Microsoft Cloud service, such as Office 365. Identities are stored in Azure AD and accessible to your organization's cloud service subscriptions. This account is also sometimes called a work or school account. So sometimes you hear this or see this term when you log into the portal, especially when you log into Office SUI portal. An account is an identity that has associated with it. You cannot have an account without an identity, right? So an identity. At the end of the day, an identity is basically a person or a thing which can get authenticated. And it can have username and a password. It can be an application which basically uses secret or keys or certificate. So there could be anything is a human or human non-human uh, entity which can access uh, the resources on behalf of somebody. Either it's a human or it's a service backing thing, right? And then you can also join machines to Azure AD, like you do join your uh, laptop to your organization's Active Directory. You can similarly do that with Azure AD. So you can pretty much do things like you can have a laptop and then associate it with it, and then log in using your credentials, right? So you can register that. So there are a couple of different ways to do that. So let's see once this is created. So let's click on that. And it takes me to the to that directory. So right now I'm not in the in the default directory, but I am in that uh, newly created directory. And you can see that now I can have the delete tenant. So I can just pretty much go ahead and click on delete tenant, and it'll tell you that the, 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 I can delete it or not because if you have any any uh, information stored, it don't let you delete. So you can see that I I have. To first get the permission to delete the Azure resource, so you can pretty much fix it from here. But we are not going to delete it at this point in time. So, the so first thing is that we need an identity. That's user, right? Let's just create a new user. So if I go ahead and say I want to create a new user, what it happens is that it creates a user with some name and then followed by az303.wg.onmicrosoft.com. That's a fully qualified name. You can associate a company domain. So if you want to do that, uh, you can pretty much add, uh, let's say, contoso.com or um, anything of that sort, abc.com. And then you can provide all the details. So for example, let me create my user. And then if this user exists in this directory, I can just see that it tells me all the details. So let me give Let's see. All right, so you can see that I can either have auto generate password or let me create the password. So if I say let me create the password, let me create the password. And then I can now go down a little bit and see that I have a group or a role. So right now I do not have any group selected, so I do not have any group created at all. So that's fine. So I'll, I'll just give the job title. So you can pretty much um, give these details uh, by yourself. So, for example, let's say Azure um, AZ303. Okay. I can also select a manager if I have any. So it shows you all the list of things, right? So you can just skip that. And then I say create. A new user gets created, right? So I just don't want to say this. So you can see that if I now go into users, I'll see the, the second user also. So let me just refresh it. Yeah, so you can see that the newly created user is showing up. 
this is the default user uh, so the login i used to create this automatically get chatted so this is the member of this you can see that now if i let's say open a new browser and i try to let's say let me put it that way simple try to log in here portal.azure.com and then here if i provide my newly created user name that was az303 notice here and then on microsoft.com that's a fully qualified name and i say next and then i provide the password I do not have access to Azure subscription. It asked me to change the password. So let's go ahead and change it. And then I just log in. So I changed the password the first time um, for the security purpose. Uh, and then I just um, say, no, I don't want to remember that. At logs means so login.microsoftonline.com is the URL you can use to to log in. So you can see that um, you are not logged into somewhere uh, in the Azure portal using the newly created username. So you are part of a part of a Active Directory. You can see that, and then you can use that same same login over here to log into Azure portal. Right. So now you're bringing in users into your organization. So that's the experience here. Now let's just browse through a couple of things over here. So let's see what all we have uh, at this point in time. So I've talked about identity and account, and then you have Azure AD. If you have on-premises Active Directory, you can pretty much connect to that, um, and then you can pretty much sync from that Active Directory, right? So you can do all those stuff like bringing in your on-premises users. You do not always need to do that. And then you have groups, right? Just like your organization group. So if you want to create a group, let's say I want to create a group of uh, people. Um, just um, And this is a group of security group. And the name of the group is um, Super Duper Admins. Okay, uh, greatest admins. So I create a group with this name. So who ha will have the highest privilege in this organization? So whosoever is the topmost person responsible for setting up things, I'll give uh, add them to this group. So I just named it like that. You have got roles and administrators. So you have different roles, existing roles available, right? So you can pretty much assign an user to uh, each of these roles, or you can have a similar way, create a group, and then assign them. You have administrative units available, so you do not have right now anything. It's a freshly created, so you can always create them by clicking Add New. Do you have any enterprise applications? Right now, there is no enterprise application. You can add enterprise applications by clicking Add New Enterprise Applications. And then you can bring them into this uh, list here. You have got um, things like devices. So if you have any um, mobile, laptop, desktop connected to Azure Directory, it will show up in this list. So we do not have anything because it is newly created. You can add that. You have identity governance um, and then app registrations. These are all typical to your requirement, right? So you can just register an application. You can view all the application in the directory. So you can add new application. So it's it's basically will go through step by step and then give the URL. It'll create an app ID and app secret, which will be used for your OAuth kind of credentials. And then you have licenses, AD Connect to connect to uh, your on-premises directory and then bring those users uh, to constant sync. We'll see that later. 
and you can also associate a custom domain so if you have let's say a company domain you can associate that um what is the what's the mobility solution like mdm and mam do you have anything right so do you have a new application so and then the password reset so what is what is kind of self-service password reset right so it allows you to you to let user change their password right from any device if they want let's say they want to constantly uh, refresh their password with new password you can do that you're going to have the company branding which means that when someone logs into the portal uh, they get redirected to the azure directory then you want to show your company logo not the microsoft logo so how do you do that so it's pretty uh, pretty easy but it is only available in the premium version of the active directory so you need to also remember like in a company we generally use premium so a lot of feature only specific to the premium uh, thing and then you have got user settings available which you can allow like um user can register an application so if you do not want any user to register application to this activity you can say no i don't want to go right now all of them are free admin portal uh, so you can restrict access who can access that admin portal etc so you have got all those different things available so explore so this is the active directory which we have created now what i'm going to do i'm going to switch back to my uh, previous directory so let me close this out and then i go to this azure portal just to make sure that i am right now in the correct directory so i can click on the logged in user account and then say switch directory right yeah and then you can see that it shows you all the list of active directories you have created so this is the active directory i have created this is where right now i am in so you can still see that selected all active directory will show you all of them at this point in time okay so this is about Active Directory. Thank you.